Hello, I'm Derek Walker, the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church, and we're in a series on praise, thanksgiving, and worship. We're seeing the importance and the power. Last time we saw the importance and power of thanksgiving, and this time we're going to focus on praise. We saw about thanksgiving that thanksgiving acknowledges the uh, grace of God, the power of God, that God is moving in our life. And by acknowledging that grace of God, we actually activate the grace of God or, or keep it active. And so when we come to God with thanksgiving, we, as it were, we activate the grace of God. We come into the presence of God uh, where we can actually receive. But it, it is right to come with thanksgiving to acknowledge God's goodness and his promises to us. And then we, that brings us into a place where we can receive God's grace. And in the same way, even once we've received by faith an answer from God, we have his grace in our hearts to release that grace in our life by, by our, through our actions, through our words, we actually activate that grace again by acknowledging it and thanking God. Thank you, Lord, you've heard my prayer. We saw that with Jesus when he raised Lazarus. He had prayed, he had received, as it were, the miracle in his heart, but he then thanked God that God had heard him. And, and by thanking him, that kept that grace active. And then he spoke and released that grace, that power, by saying, Lazarus, come forth. And as a result, Lazarus came out, his spirit came out of paradise and his body came out the grave. But thanksgiving was integral to the release of God's power. Well, now we're going to move on to praise. Whereas thanksgiving focuses on what God has done and what he is doing for us on his grace, praise focuses Thanks, so thanksgiving focuses on what God does for us, whereas praise focuses on what, who God is, and especially his awe-inspiring greatness and majesty. Psalm 48 tells us how we should praise God. It says, great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In other words, our praise should be in pro proportional to God's greatness. Since he is great, he is to be greatly praised. We shouldn't give minimalistic praise. It should be great praise because God is great. His greatness is infinite. So there should be no limit to how much we, sh we praise him. We can't overdo it. He's worth it all. He's worthy of it all. We can never outpraise God, overpraise God. They should be ever increasing. We should be ever increasing in our praise to God. As we praise God for his greatness, so he will be magnified in our hearts and in our minds. And we'll see things in their true perspective because God will be bigger in our thinking. The more we magnify God by our praises, the smaller our problems will seem by comparison. You know, David, he faced all kinds of dangers when Saul was chasing him, trying to kill him. But David, even in the, those situations, we see in the Psalms that David continually magnified God above his circumstances. Let's see that in Psalm 34. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times, good times, bad times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Notice he praises God continually. It's his lifestyle because it blesses him, blesses the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. So he knows that his praise blesses God and he knows that his praise changes him for the better. And he talks about boasting in the Lord. When we praise, we're boasting in the Lord and his greatness. We are exalting his name above everything else, and we are magnifying him. These are the words that he uses to magnify, to boast, to exalt his name. And that's what we do in praise. We're opening our heart and declaring how great God is. And so when we come with God, with, to God with requests that seem very difficult to us, it helps to first of all prepare our hearts by thanking God for all the things he's done for us already and by praising him for his power, his faithfulness, his greatness. 
And by magnifying God in that way, you see, it becomes easier for us to believe that, that such a God could answer our prayer and that he is well able to do it. Nothing's impossible to him. And so it's great to, to start our prayers with praise and thanksgiving. It prepares the way for our petitions. Well, praise blesses God and it also benefits us in many great ways. Um, today we're going to look at six benefits, six things that God accomplishes in our life through praise. Number one, praise get, brings us into God's presence and brings his presence into us. Psalm 22, it says, God, God is holy. He is enthroned in the praises of his people. So God inhabits, literally it means God inhabits and sits upon our praises. And, and so it, it brings us, our hearts, into God's presence. It brings God's presence into our hearts. There is no access to God, really, except thanksgiving and praise. Psalm 100 verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. That's praise, is to bless his name. Isaiah 60 gives a description of God's city where God's presence dwells and it gives the key for entering into it. It says in verse 14, They will call you the city of the Lord, Zion, of the Holy One of Israel. And then it says, I will make you an eternal excellence. You will know that I, the Lord, am your Saviour and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Verse 18, Violence shall no longer be heard in your land, neither wasting nor destruction within your borders. But now, watch this next phrase. How do we get into his presence? How do we come into this place uh, where there is no destruction, no curse, but only peace? It says, but you will call your walls salvation. And salvation means the fullness of every blessing. You will call your walls salvation and you will call your gates praise. So the wall surrounding the presence of God is salvation. You have to come into that place through salvation, through Christ. But also, to enter into the fullness of what God has for you, you have to go through his gates. And the gates are called praise. In other words, praise is the only access into that immediate presence of God where the, the fullness of what God has for you is there. You have to go in through the gates called praise. And so praise is vital in our access to God's presence and salvation, the fullness of salvation. Number two, praise brings us into total victory. Psalm 106 says, Save us, O God, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. To triumph in your praise. Now, praise and thanksgiving, it says, will cause us to triumph. Triumph is what happens after the victory has been won. You know, you, you have a triumphal procession. That means you celebrate the victory that's already been won. It's the celebration of a completed victory. So when we praise God, we are not actually asking him for the victory. We are celebrating the fact that he's already won. So through praise and thanksgiving, we stand in faith upon Christ's completed victory and his completed work. We identify with it and we thank him for it and we praise him for his greatness. And so praise brings us into that spirit of triumph, the spirit of victory that Jesus has already won. And by praise, we, we triumph with Christ. Hallelujah. We triumph in the praise of God. So praise brings us into the, the, the fullness of that victory. Well, number three, praise releases the glory of God in our lives. Psalm 30, verse 11, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You've put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Now, he says God wants to restore us from mourning and so on. He wants to restore us so that our glory might praise him. Now, our glory is our tongue. 
we can see this actually by comparing Psalm 19, Psalm 16, verse 9, and Acts 2, 26. So Psalm 16, 9 says, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. Now when this is quoted in the New Testament, in Acts 2, 26, it translates it as, Therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. So, my glory rejoices, my tongue was glad. In other words, your tongue is your glory. That is the main reason God gave you, because your tongue expresses what's in your heart. Uh, and the main reason God gave you a tongue is to glorify him. It's the supreme member of your body to praise God with and release his glory. And so your tongue is your glory. We praise God with all our body, but primarily with the tongue. That's the leading member. And it's, the tongue is your glory means that also that as you uh, speak his praises, you release glory to God. Not just outward glory in the sound of your words, but those words contain the glory of God. Hallelujah. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, it says, Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, when, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments and music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, and his mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord, the temple, was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. And so we are also the house of God, the temple of the living God. And it says that when they praised God, the glory of God was released from the Holy of Holies and it filled the whole house. And in the same way, when we praise God, we release God's glory to fill his house. We are God's temples. And so God praise releases the glory of God in our lives. It brings the atmosphere of heaven into our hearts and lives. Again, it says that you are holy. God is holy, enthroned on the praises of his people, or that he inhabits the praises of his people. So as we praise him, his presence, his glory fills us. And uh, we are inviting, if you like, when we praise, we are inviting his presence to flow out of our Holy of Holies, out of our spirit, into our souls and into our bodies. And of course, that's what we want. And so praise is vital for that, it, to release the glory of God that's already in our spirit into our lives. Acts 16, at midnight, that's when Paul and Silas were in prison. They were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. So they did it nice and loud. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. What an amazing picture this was. This was no ordinary earthquake. This was supernatural. It was localized to the prison. And nobody was hurt, but all the doors were opened and all the chains were loosed. So it's very targeted, supernatural. So notice when they praised God, the presence and the power of God was released and it shook the whole natural order. We think natural things are so strong, but actually they are weak compared to the spirit reality of the spiritual things. And so they were shaken by the presence of God. And the result of this release of the power of God was that all barriers, all the doors that were holding them in and holding them back, they were opened. And all the prisoners were set free from their chains. So everything that was binding them was broken. And so in the same way, in your darkest hour, in your midnight hour, when you are apparently in bondage and closed in, if you will praise God, like Paul and Silas, with all, their, with all your heart, then the power of God will be released uh, to set you free from all your chains. And the doors will be opened, the doors of opportunity that have been locked tight against you, and that you'll be able to walk out free into a new life. This release of God's power was precipitated by praise.
And it actually resulted also in the salvation of the jailer and his whole household. And so the power of God is released, the glory of God is released through our praises. Hallelujah. Well, Matthew chapter 6, the Lord's Prayer. How does it start? It starts with praise and worship. It says, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, or thy will come into manifestation on earth as it is in heaven. Well, notice the order here. First, we must hallow and honor the name of God through praise and worship. Hallowed be your name. That activates now the grace of God and positions us to receive it. We're, that's the start. It, we're, we're, we're in position now to receive. Then we pray for his kingdom to come. Now, what is the kingdom of God? According to Romans 14, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom of God is everything we need. It's the grace of God in the Holy Spirit. And so, first of all, we hallow his name, which prepares the way for the kingdom of God now to come into our hearts. And it comes into our heart through the Holy Spirit, through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so when we praise God, first of all, it begins with our praise to God, hallowing his name, which opens our heart to receive the kingdom of God. Uh, and then we, we ask for the kingdom to, to come into our hearts, for, the, for that healing, for that life, for that grace of God to flow into our hearts. And that kingdom brings righteousness, peace and joy. In righteousness is instructions for our life and uh, peace and joy and so much more. But first we, we must praise, hallow his name, and then we can receive the kingdom, the grace of God to come into our hearts. And that kingdom and presence of God in our hearts is the foundation then for God's will to be done in our life, to be manifested in our life. You see, once we receive the grace of God in our hearts, we can then bring the will of God to pass in our life through our praying, through our saying, through our obeying, through our actions of obedience as he leads us step by step. And, but we are expressing the grace of God that we have received. And so first, by faith, we receive the kingdom, the spirit into our heart. Then by the obedience of faith, we release the spirit in, in our lives. And so again, praise is, is, is essential for the release of God's kingdom grace into our hearts. Well, that's number three. Number four, praise delivers us from the spirit of heaviness and depression. Isaiah 61, it says, To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So notice he gives us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When you put on the garment of praise, clothing yourself with God's praises, that will displace and remove the spirit of heaviness from you. Number five, praise is beautiful and it beautifies us and our character, brings forth the, the full beauty of what God has made us to be. Psalm 33, rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. You're being beautiful when you praise God and God's beauty is being worked in you. This praise helps our true Christian personality to unfold. It says in Psalm 149, let them praise his name with a dance, sing praises to him with timbrel and harp, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people, especially when they praise him, and he will beautify the humble who praise him in this way with salvation. He will beautify the humble with salvation. So you see, the fall of man has caused much of our potential and the beauty of our, of our personality to be suppressed. But when we praise God, he's able to bring it forth. Just like a flower which blooms and reveals its beauty when it's in the sunshine. So likewise, we thrive when we come into the sunshine of God's loving presence through our praise and worship. And, and, 
as a result, the real us on the inside is able to come forth and to blossom and to bear fruit. Well, number six, praise releases spiritual strength into our hearts for living, empowering us to do God's will. Praise releases strength. Psalm 8, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. That is praise, declaring the excellency of his name. And then he says, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. You've ordained strength. Notice that phrase. Now, the New Testament quotes this in Matthew 21. It says, When the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that Jesus did, then the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant, the Pharisees were, and said to him, Do you hear what they're saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, and have you never heard, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. And here Jesus is quoting from Psalm 8, but instead of saying, you have ordained strength, he quotes it as, you have perfected praise. And therefore, by combining those two thoughts, what he's saying is that the ordained strength of God's people is perfected praise. In other words, praise releases spiritual strength into our hearts to do the will of God and to endure and keep doing the will of God, even under pressure. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength through praise because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Now notice God chooses the weakest of believers, the babes, as an example for this principle to show that it will work for everyone. If it will work for the babes then it will work for you, for you, and anyone. When we give our mouth and give perfect praise to God, we release the strength of God into our hearts and that enables us to overcome the enemy, to silence the enemy and in all his attacks and temptations. So our praise actually imposes silence on the enemy. Um, he's unable to speak his lies and accusations to us. And so praise causes us to be instruments of God's strength and power, silencing the work of the enemy, nullifying it, uh, and so praise makes us powerful. Nehemiah 8.10 agrees, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And he's basically telling the, the Israelites at that time, it was the Feast of Tabernacles, not to mourn, but during the Feast of Tabernacles to only rejoice in God. And he explains why he says that the, the joy, the praising of God releases his joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so what he's saying is that as you rejoice in God, you release the strength of God into your hearts. And that's a great reason to praise him. We see this also in Colossians 1, Paul's prayer. He prays that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might. There's the strength. Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power. So it's God's power working in you that will strengthen your heart. For all patience and long-suffering, that means... We are patient under difficult circumstances and long-suffering with difficult people and we'll have the strength to continue and do the right thing. Notice, he says, with joyfulness, giving thanks to the Father. Now, what he's saying here is that we are strengthened with all might to be patient, continue to do the right thing. We are strengthened with joyfulness. It's, it's being joyful. It's being rejoicing that gives us this strength. He says, with joyfulness, giving thanks to the Father. So the key to be strengthened with all might in our heart uh, is joyfulness, giving thanks to the Father. Giving thanks to the Father, uh, being rejoicing in him, actually releases that strength for us to live our life under pressure. Praise God. Uh, one example of that is like an empty can you know, is not really empty because the, the air pressure on the inside is sufficient to balance the pressure from the whole atmosphere bearing down on that can. And, and so 
it's fine that way. But if you use a vacuum pump and you pull out the air from the inside of that can, it will suddenly crumple as if by magic. What's actually happening is now there is nothing on the inside, the pressure of the atmosphere just crumples it. And so in the same way, while we have the inner strength of the Holy Spirit inside us, whatever the pressures are on the outside, we have the strength to overcome. And we get that strength through our praise of God. But if we do not praise God and thank God, we don't have the presence of God in our hearts and we crumple under the pressure and the spirit of the world that comes upon us. Well, Habakkuk 3 is another example. He's been told that the Israelites were going to be judged, the Babylonians were going to invade, it's going to be difficult times ahead. And, and he says that when he heard that, he trembled um, and he knew that the trouble is going to come. And he then says, though the fig tree may not blossom nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stores, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me walk on my high hills. And notice he says he will rejoice in the Lord nevertheless, whatever the circumstances, because the Lord is his strength. As he praises him, the Lord's strength will come into his heart and he will be able to navigate the difficult times. Uh, the, he will walk on the high hills and uh, he'll be able to handle things. He'll have the strength to handle the difficult times ahead. And so he says, I will, whatever happens, I will praise God. And that through that praise, I will receive, the Lord will become my strength and I will have the skill to walk through those difficult times. Amen. I trust that this series on praise, thanksgiving and worship has really inspired you and motivated you to really deepen and increase your praise life with God. And once you see all the amazing things that praise will do for you in your life, uh, and to encourage you in this, I also have a CD series with eight CDs from when I preached on praise in our church and I would encourage you to to develop and be further inspired through these eight CDs and uh, this will uh, in take you to another level in your praise life with God. Thank you for watching. You can watch more of our teachings on our Oxford Bible Church Roku channel and Derek Walker YouTube channel. You're most welcome to join us at our church services which are every Sunday at 11am and 6pm at Cheney School, Headington, Oxford, OX3 7QH. You can order CDs, DVDs, books and other great products from our online shop at www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk or by calling 01865 515 086.